somebody say you can make it as long as the Lord is on your side look at somebody say you can make it yeah hallelujah hallelujah without you I don't know I feel that in my spirit I'm not going to do anything we're going to move forward without you. I know I just put in for that home loan. I'm trying to get pre-approved, but I'm not going to go to the bank, Lord. I'm not going anywhere without you. I know I work for the school system. Yes. Fights every day. Father. Children being shot, but I'm not going to go to work yes. without you. Come on, where's the church at this morning? Yeah. Even when I'm driving down the highway, yeah. cars doing what they want to do. Lord, I'm not going to be like a Tesla yeah. and drive without you. Without Whoa. Oh. Lord, I'm not doing nothing without you. I dare you just to wave your hand and say, I'm not doing it. If I got to do it without him. I remember in my younger days, and we gonna move, when I used to hang out with my, my girlfriend then, but it was, she's my wife now, thank the Lord. But she used to be my girlfriend, and the older saints knew something. They would say, take your little cousin with you. And I'd be looking at my mom and daddy like, for what? Why they gotta come? They say, because the likelihood of you stepping into a ramification of sin ain't as easy when you got accountability with you. I don't know who this is for, but if somebody's trying to get you to do something, you need to say, can Jesus come? Well, let's go over here and talk about this. Well, well can Jesus talk with us? Oh, Lord. I feel like apostle. Oh, Lord. Young people, when you on that, that phone, can Jesus look while you're doing what you're doing? I dare you lift up your hand and say, if Jesus can't come, I don't need to go. Yes! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, one more time. Just clap your hands, all you people. I don't know where I'm going to go from here, but I feel this song in my spirit. I don't even know if y'all know this song, but come on, clap your hands. Help me, Holy Ghost. Somehow, somehow, Lord, I got to make the journey somehow. The devil's on my track, trying to take me back. This journey somehow, 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 somehow. Lord, I got I to make, make the journey somehow. somehow. Yes, the devil's on my back, trying to take me. Got to make this journey somehow. Try to take me back. God. 
to make this journey. Come on, put your hands. Somehow. 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 Lord, I got to make the journey. Somehow. Oh, the devil's on my track. And try and take me back. Got to make the journey. Somehow. Come on, you should have it by now. Somehow. 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 Lord, I Put your hands together. Take me back. I got to make a 
tries to do is get in between what the preacher say. So when the preacher say, you shall live and not die, the organist will play in between so that when the devil tries to jump in between that suggestion, it clogs the mind of the people to not hear anything but what the man of God is saying. So when the music is playing, that's a good time to get your praise on because the devil can't interfere well, what your praise is working on? Look, we got to get out of here. But if you got something you need God to do, when I count to three, I need you to give God your best and let the music play. One, two, three. Sit right here. 
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, J
yourself, mother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I got a news flash for you. Just, just on Monday, I got the news that my niece in Mobile, Alabama has stage four cancer and the doctor have gave her three days to live. That was on Monday. I got a hold of the saints. And asked the saints to start praying. And bombard heaven. You know, I got the news on Monday. Just this morning, I got the news that she's still alive. The prayers of the righteous availed much. 
and I'm going to give God praise for what he has done and what he is doing. Yes! Hey! Put your hands together and give God praise that's due his name. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. For well, truly there is nobody like our God. The songwriter said, I searched the whole world over and I couldn't find nobody. Oh, Lord, is there any witness here? Amen. Amen. Truly, we thank God for you of being here this morning. Thank God for our viewing audience that are there on Facebook. We thank you for being here in attendance. We thank God for all of you and all of your prayers that you have rendered unto the Lord for my niece and others that was in need of prayer. We welcome you to the Light of the World ministry. My wife is going to come, and she's going to give us official welcome. Receive as she comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praising God because you know what? They gave her three days. They said by Friday she would be gone. And she's still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor's family, 
a lot of them are not saved. They don't understand the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of prayer. But we just need God. And we just kept on praying. I kept fasting all week for her. And just to see what God has done. And she wasn't even talking or anything. Hallelujah. And just yesterday, my sister-in-law said, you know, what Felicia she hadn't said anything. And just yesterday, she was talking. Hallelujah. And gained more strength. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love to see how God works when everybody else wanted to give up on her. We kept on praying, saints, because you know what? We serve a big God, and he's able. He's able. Hallelujah. I know he's able because he healed me from cancer. I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm here. Hallelujah. And I praise him because he's a good God. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, you got to get to know Jesus, even when they say, you know what, all else is, is gone. You got to know he's able. He is able. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to welcome everybody to the house of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My friend is here, ladies. And her mother, Mother Dunbar, is here. Praise the Lord. And then our son, Minister Aaron Thurgood, is here. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for Pastor Sansom and Lady Sansom. Amen. Amen. And Elder Spain is here. And we thank God for Elder Rashawn in her absence. Praise God. Amen. And all of you, I don't see any visitors. And we thank God for Pastor Drew and my mentor is here. Amen. Inspiration of Hope Ministries. Praise God. But we just thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost this morning that fell in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I was listening to the old songs that Ella McNair was singing. It brought back memories, so many memories of the old church. And I tell you, those songs is what got us over. Amen. Even when I was a, a teenager, you know, I just remember the older saints used to sing all those songs. And, you know, even I wasn't saved then, but I still can feel God's anointing upon my life. Amen. When they would sing those songs. But I just thank God for who he is today. And for giving us another opportunity to praise and worship him this morning. Amen. Amen. A lot of people not here because of the weather. You know how it goes. But we're we here. And we're going to praise him. Amen. That being said, we're going to get our offering. Get that on out the way. Amen. Praise team going to come after that, and then we're going to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. From our very own. Praise God. Anybody need an envelope? Amen. You can stand and follow the ushers. On my way, oh, the Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now, I said the Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now, I said the Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now, he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Blessing me right now, oh right now. Said he woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. Oh, he did 
won't let me sleep too late. Oh, he woke me, woke me, woke me right on time. Said he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. It's blessing me right now. Oh, right now. For the giver and the ones that didn't have it to give, God. We ask you to bless them that they will have it next time, God. We ask you, Lord Jesus, Lord, just to let them know that you're able to bless them and prove it to them, God. Lord, as you said in your word, God. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to just bless them even fourfold for one. In the mighty name of Jesus, and use it for kingdom building. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Say the Lord is it's blessing me right now, oh right now. He woke me up this morning, it started, it started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh right now. Praise God, hallelujah, be blessing you. Amen. He's blessing you even when you don't realize it. Praise God. At this time, we're going to bring up the apostle to introduce the speaker for the hour. God bless you. Lord is blessing me right now. The 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 Lord is blessing me right now. Come on, sing it. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 Come on. Oh, I hear a sound in here. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 Say it again. The Lord is blessing me right now. The Lord is blessing me right now. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 Lord is bl
We're blessed. This is name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. It's something when the Lord is blessing you. Not on yesterday, not two weeks ago, but right now. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Ah, yes. Glory to God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Let me move right along here. Hallelujah. It is my honor as well as a pleasure to introduce to you the speaker of the hour. Amen. We love this young man every time he comes this way. We always feast on what the Lord has given us through him. We know that this vessel and the word that he has for us this morning is coming from a clean, Holy Ghost-filled vessel. I remember the late Bishop Barnett Thurgood used to say, I like a glass of milk, but it does me no good if it's in an unclean glass. But this vessel, we know for a fact, is clean. And he lives a holy, sanctified life. And I want you to prepare yourself to hear a word from the Lord. Somebody say a fresh word from the Lord. Amen. In the form of Minister Aaron Thurgood. Now, we're going to ask him to get ready to come. The music has already done set the house in place. And we want God to be able to use him in any ways he sees fit. At this time, I ask you to stand to your feet. Let us receive the messenger of the hour in the form of Minister Aaron Thurgood. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Why don't you put those hands together and bless God once again. As I was sitting there, I can hear the Spirit singing to me. And all week long, I can hear him singing. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sense breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. I heard the voice of Jesus bidding me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never. Come on, help me sing it. Oh, no, oh, never, never alone. alone. He, he promised, promised never to leave me. me. Never to leave me alone. Oh, no, never alone. Oh, no, never alone. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me. One more time, help me sing it. Oh, no, never alone. Oh, no. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. How many know God promised never to leave you alone? I don't care what the enemy throws your way. God promised he'll never leave you alone. Just look at somebody and say, I'm never alone. I'm never alone. I'm never alone. I might feel alone, but I'm never 
Lord, I feel my help coming on. I said, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never alone because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I, that I am his own and the joy. Y'all looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I said, and the joy, the joy that we share yeah. as we tarry. I can tarry. That oh, yeah. None other. 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 Never. Ever known. Oh, yeah. My, 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 oh, my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just look at somebody and say, I belong to God. And he belongs to me. And there's nothing the world yes, can do about it. I said there's nothing the world can do about it. Oh, yeah. The winds may blow. Yeah. The storms may rise. Yes, sir. Billows may roll. Oh, yeah. But I'm covered. Oh, I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Under the blood. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Just slap somebody high five and say, I'm covered under the blood. Come on, tell them I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm 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 covered. I, I'm covered under the blood. I'm covered under the blood. My Bible tells me. I said my Bible tells me he that dwelleth in the secret place. Of the most high shall shall abide under the shadows of the almighty look at somebody and say i'm under his wings i'm under his wings lord i feel like preaching in here yes sir come on i said i feel like preaching in here while i was sitting there and all week long all week long if salman if you can give me a little bit more volume in my mic but all week long as I was sitting, as I was sitting there and all week long, I was struggling because I just started a new job. For those of you that know, I just started working as a sheriff. And all week long, I've been kind of stretching myself and it feels like I really couldn't get no rest and a lot's been going on. But when I stepped into the house of the Lord, and how many know when you step into the house of the Lord, everything will be all right. Look at your neighbor and say, it's all right now. It's all right now. It's all right now. Jesus said he'll fix it. And it's all right now. I've got strength. i got power. I've got power. And I've got strength. Lift your hand and say, yeah. Power to run through troops. Power to leap over walls. Power over discouragement. Power over fear. Power over anxiety. I've got power. I've got power. I've got power. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got power. If you know you got power, touch your neighbor and say, I've got power. I've got power. Lord, let me stop right there. Our hands are lifted. Our hands are lifted. Father, it's once again that we assemble ourselves in your presence. God is not by happenstance that we are here on today. But God, we are here for a divine reason. God, since you allowed us to gather in this place, we ask you to have your way. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Over our minds. We plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Hide me behind the radiance of Calvary's cross. Let them see less of me and more of thee. In the name of Jesus. It's not about me, but it's all about you. God, have your way in the name of Jesus. Let Satan be bound. 
sit on strength sit on deliverance sit on healing sit on power sit on encouragement in the name of Jesus Satan the Lord rebuke you now Satan the Lord rebuke you now Satan the Lord rebuke you now the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus father have your way in the name of Jesus send the anointing that makes preaching easy if there's anything in our lives God that will prohibit your spirit from moving freely we ask you now to move it out of the way so that your will can be done after all God is all about your will it's not our will it's not our wants but it's your will so Lord have your way in the name of Jesus let the people be edified you be glorified and the devil horrified in the name of Jesus have your way Lord come on tell him have his way have your way Lord have your way Lord send a unique anointing in this room send fresh power send a renewal of joy send a renewal of peace in the name of Jesus break the rod of the oppressor's rule and rebuke the day of evil oh God rebuke the devil chair now in the name of Jesus that old stubborn demon that old stubborn demon that old stubborn demon we cast you out now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord have your way Lord we didn't come to play we didn't come to show off but we came because God we need something from you God meet our needs on today and God let us go down from this Zion giving you praise anoint these lips of clay and God these ears are the same material and father we'll go down from this Zion giving you praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and we all together shout amen before you see it just look at your neighbor and tell him I love you to life tell you tell him now tell him I love you to life I love you to life I I love you to life God bless you. Truly, it is good to be in the house of the Lord on today. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. I can hear the Spirit sing, singing. My hell, my hell, my hell. All of my help cometh from the Lord, my help. Come on, lift up those hands now. My help, oh my help. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Sing my all of my help, my help, oh my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. My help, all of my help, oh my help, my help, my help, my help, no matter what you're going through. Your help comes from the Lord. I don't care how you feel in your body. All of my help coming from the Lord. You might get weak in your body. It might seem like all hope is lost. It's the enemies attacking you on the left and on the right. But all of all of your help. 
comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. All of my help coming from the Lord. Come on and put those hands together if you love God on today. Truly the presence of the Lord is in this place. And we bless God for his spirit that's even in the room. All of my help comes from the Lord. I can't do it in and of myself. In him I live, move, and have my being. I can't go by myself. I can't preach by myself. I, I can't work without myself. But every day, I need God with me. I need him to strengthen me. I need him to cover me. Even when I'm fearing things. Even when it seems like anxiety is attacking me. All of my help comes from the Lord. It's the enemy's objective to make you feel like you're in it by yourself. But I come to remind you that all of your help comes from the Lord. My God, look at somebody and say, all of my help comes from the Lord. David said, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from who? The Lord. Just somebody just look toward heaven and say, Lord, help me. My God, my God, my God. As I said before, truly the Lord is in this place and we acknowledge his presence that's even in the room to the apostle of this house, the apostle Terry Williams. God bless you. And to his lovely wife that stands alongside of him, Lady Felice Williams. And to all of the pastors, Pastor Samson and all of the pastors, his lovely wife and to you, Pastor. To all of the pastors, ministers, saints and friends and to my mother that's here with me and also... Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. And my grandmother that's come along with me. And I believe this is her first time. My niece, Skyla, she's here with me on today. That's my sister's daughter. Amen. Skyla, don't show off in here today. <laughs> Look how she's looking at me. <laughs> but truly, I give honor to everybody, to Elder McNair and to you, uh, my brother, and to Brother Travis, and to all of the um, musicians, and to you, the people of God, it's truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on today. As I said before, y'all, I want y'all to get with me on today. Y'all normally talk back to me, so I'm going to need y'all to have that same energy. Because uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Ellis used to always say, he said, I, I'm as tired as you are, so don't start nothing. Just look at somebody and say, don't start nothing. But I believe truly God will have his way on today. Truly the word of God will come forth with power. Amen. Hopefully I gave everybody uh, acknowledgments on today. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. As I said, I just started a new job working as a sheriff. And God knows. Amen. Amen. God knows it has been a strain working in the jail and looking at those inmates and and just watching another style of life that I would never want to be a part of. My God, just looking to smelling the smells and seeing the different attitudes and being in that environment. I had to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me with this one because this is uncharted territory. I, I kind of felt like Joseph uh, when Joseph was sent into prison and, and, and he was in an unfamiliar territory, you know, and so... I want you all to continue to pray with me throughout the week and pray for me yeah. throughout the week that God will give me a sound mind and he will cover me in my endeavors. Amen. Yeah. But truly, there is a word from the Lord. I'm not going to be before you long. The hour is already far spent. I believe in expediting the word expeditiously, but telling it in truth. Amen. Yeah. So truly, there is a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles on today, quickly go with me to Job, the first chapter, and we're going to read the second chapter in its entirety. It's kind of a lengthy uh, passage of scripture, so I cut it down as best as I could to the first and the second chapter. Can y'all hang with me through that? Yeah. We're going to read the first and the second chapter for the sake of understanding, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of the Lord reads, there once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. I can stop right there. Some theologians argued the point as I was studying this. Some theologians argued the point that Paul was just, I mean, uh, Job was just a figment of imagination or he was just a parable that was told. But 
as I read the Bible, the Bible says there once was a man named Job. That means he was in existence. He was alive. He walked the earth. So the Bible goes on to read, there once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in the entire area. Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When these, three, when these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings for each of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. and The accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that goes on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. Listen at the devil. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. All right. You may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want to with everything he possesses. But don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabaeans raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news, bad news on top of bad news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with this news. Three bands of Chaldeans ra raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in the, at their older brother's home. Uh, suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all, uh, all of your children are dead. My God, I am the only one who escaped to tell you. It's something how bad news knows how to find its way to you. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. And all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Last chapter. One day, the member Members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves before the Lord. And, at, and, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant, Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil, and he has maintained his integrity, even though you have urged me to harm him without cause. Satan replied to the Lord, skin for skin. Look at him getting crafty. 
A man will give up everything he has to save his life and will surely curse you to your face. All right. Do with him as you please, the Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence and struck Job with the terrible boils from head to toe. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, are you surely trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. When three of Job's friends heard of the tragedy uh, he had suffered, they got together and traveled from their homes to comfort and counsel him. Their names were Elphaz the Timnite, Bildad the Shehite, and Zephar the Nemahite. When they saw Job from a distance, they scarcely recognized him. Wailing loudly, they tore their robes and threw dust in the air over their heads to show their grief. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and nights. No one said a word to Job, for they saw that his sufferings was too great for words. And we closed the book. If there were a thought, and I want you all to pray with me on this morning. If there were a thought that I would leave you on today, I would just tell you to just look at somebody and say, Abiding under the care of God. Look at that person on the other side of you and tell them real good. Tell them, abiding under the care of God. Uh, when we hear that statement, oftentimes we think nothing bad will ever happen to us. When we hear about the care of God, we automatically assume that every day will be uh, somewhat a sunshiny day and, 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 and things might go wrong, but it won't go totally wrong. And, and we seem like nothing will ever happen when we hear about the care of God. We always hear that God will protect us. We always hear that God will cover us. But what do you do when the care of God also involves some suffering? Suffering. Nobody likes that word, suffering. We all must go through a measure of suffering, abiding under the care of God. To abide is to live or to dwell in a place. Abiding is to last or endure for a long period of time. When we use the word abide, it simply means I'm in agreement with, with, with whatever recommendations or decisions that has been made. As children of God, we have been taught the importance of abiding fully in God and his will for our lives. Can I get a witness? John 14 and 4 gives us this intelligence. It tells us, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Here in this passage of scripture, uh, we see Jesus explaining to his disciples in order to truly bear good fruit, good fruit, good fruit. In order to truly bear good fruit, there must be a connection uh, between the vine and the branch. Jesus said, I am the vine and ye are the branch. So in order for us to bear good fruit, there must be a good connection between the vine and the branch. The branch. Can I get a witness? This fruit that Jesus is talking about is defined in Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It is here uh, we see abiding in God is more than just security for the believer. But it is a source of or it is the source or nucleus of all the good that we do. We see individuals in today's church. We wonder why uh, they don't exemplify the fruits of the spirit. They no longer have joy. They don't have peace. They're some of the hellish Christians I've ever seen. They don't have love. They have hate, hatred in their heart. It's because they're not connected to the vine. Look at somebody and say, you've got to be connected. 
in order to do good, you have to be connected to the because Paul said all of my righteousness are what? As filthy rags. The good that I would do, I do it not because there's constantly a thorn that constantly comes to buffet at me. So I've got to be connected. I've got to find myself constantly laying before the Lord and confessing my sins to God and letting God know that I'm nothing without him. Can I get a witness? Look at y'all looking at me like that. Uh, abiding in God enables the believer to say no to things they really want to say yes to. I can't hear nobody. It allows the believer to forgive when they've been done wrong and have uh, every right for revenge or bitterness. Uh, abiding in God helps the believer to control their appetites. Uh, a lot of us have some wild appetites. We hunger after alcohol. We, we, we hunger after smoking weed. I, I'm getting ready to mess up now. We hunger after eating those edibles. Y'all looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We have so many different appetites. We hunger after the lust of the world. We hunger after things that we know we shouldn't hunger of. It helps us to control our appetites. Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. The good that you do is not in and of yourself. That's why the Bible says, for by grace are we saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. It is God that allows us to get up every morning and serve him. It is God that allows us to speak the word in truth. It is God that helps us not to tell a lie when we're backed up in the corner. It is God. Look at somebody and say it's all God. The songwriter wrote, it's nothing, it's not me, but it's all God. It's all God. Look at somebody and say one more time, say it's all God. Uh, when we find it or when we are fully abiding under the care of Jesus Christ, we become his responsibility through every phase of life. Can I say that again? When we are fully abiding under the care of God, not half-handedly, but when we are fully abiding under the care of Jesus Christ, we become his responsibility through every phase of life, through sickness, discouragement, hurt, loneliness, stress, and death. God is obligated to carry his people through whatever life presents. Can I get a witness in here? A lot of times, uh, newly converted believers turn back into a lifestyle of sin because they've got the misconception that once you're saved, then nothing bad will happen to you. I've seen it all the time. We just get saved. We come to the altar and we fall out, foam at the mouth, and we're excited. We go back home. We're excited because we know that God has done a new thing in our life and we know that God, we're now connected to God, but we don't realize that there's a cost that we must pay. The late G.E. Patterson used to sing a song that says, count up all the costs it takes to walk with Jesus. He said, count up all the costs with courage, make your claim. And he says, make up your mind to suffer if you would have him reign. And when the battle is raging, give glory to his name. How many of you know when you're serving God, the battle is going to be raging? It's going to be some times when you want to give up. It's going to be some times when you want to give in. It's going to be some times when you feel like you can't make it. But when the battle is raging, you've got to learn how to have a praise. You've got to learn how to, ha how to have a dance. You've got to learn how to lift up your voice and give God praise. Even when it seems all hope is gone. When the battle is raging, give glory to his name. Look at somebody and say, you've got to give him glory. Uh, whether saved or not at some point or another all of us will face something that shakes our faith in Jesus Christ we are not exempt from losing loved ones due to life circumstances however we have hope that the world does not have for Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 but I would not have you to be ignorant, brothers concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others 
who have no hope. Yes, we still sorrow when things happen in our life and when things go wrong, when we lose loved ones. Yes, we still sorrow. Yes, we still cry because we're still human. But Paul is telling us in 1 Thessalonians, yes, we may sorrow, but we don't sorrow as those who have no hope because we know that if this body be destroyed and if this earthly tabernacle be destroyed, we have another building that's not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. Is there anybody in here that believe that there is another building that awaits us. We got to know and be confident in Jesus Christ. I don't care what comes our way. Things are going to come. Life is going to seem unbearable. But Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, I know that's a cliche saying, but I mean what I say. No matter what you're facing, God is there. I don't care if your bills are due. I don't care if you're uh, charting new territory. I don't care what your situation might be. You may have got a bad note from the doctors. You may can't pay your bills. Whatever the problem is, I heard the old song says, God specializes in things impossible, and he will do just what he said he will do how many how many witnesses do i got on today how many of you had that problem that you couldn't solve yourself but when you turn it over to jesus you found out that he was a doctor in the sick room when you turn it over to jesus you found out that he was a lawyer in the courtroom when you turn it over to jesus you found out that he was a friend when you was friendless i turn it over to jesus and i stopped worrying about it i gave it over to the lord and he worked it out look at somebody and say he worked it out he worked it out he 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 worked it out my god take your seat if you can i'm moving right along abiding under the care of christ allows us to wither storms that typically would devour our faith in jesus christ being under the care of God enables us to go through trials that seem unbearable, but come out or come through with total victory. Can I say that again? Being under the care of God enables us to go through trials that seem unbearable, but come through with total victory. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and he gives us the what? Victory. I heard the late G. E. Patterson say it was a vicarious victory. Vicarious means somebody else fought the battle but gave me the victory. 2,000 years ago on the cross, Jesus fought the battle. He went to the cross willingly. He took 39 lashes. They put a crown on his head. He got on the cross. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. And he did it all just for me. I can hear the prophet Isaiah saying, surely he's bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we didn't esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded. For my Y'all looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am. You're healed from cancer. You're, you're, you're healed from disease. You're, you're, you're healed from loneliness. You're, you're healed. You're, look at somebody and say, I'm healed. I, I'm healed. I, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. He already gave me the victory. And I heard the song says, don't wait till the battle is over, but do what? Shout right now. Don't wait till the battle is over, but shout right now. When the battle is raging, when your back is up against the wall, when you can't see your way out, don't wait till God deliver you, but show God that you have total faith in him and get a dance right now. Get a praise right now. Lift up your hands and give God some praise. I must move along. I must move along. When we are truly... When we are truly and fully abiding under the care of Jesus Christ, uh, the sufferings we encounter are not in vain, but serve a purpose for our next level 
in our lives. When we are truly abiding, we know the scripture. It says all things. I can't hear nobody. All things work together for the good of them that love God or who are the called according to his promise and to his name. We, all things work together for our good. When we are truly abiding in Jesus Christ, no matter what you face, it may seem like, Lord, why did this just happen to me? You might, be able, might not be able to put together all of the pieces. It might seem like the things that happen to you don't even make sense. It may seem like you're at a place in life where everything seems uh, 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 dysfunctional and everything seems like it's just a jumble of mess. But I came to tell you today that all of your pain that you have been suffering right now is going to elevate you for the next purpose of your life. I'm reminded of David when David was in the field. David encountered a bear and a lion. That bear and the lion was to give David technique and to build David's courage in God. The Bible says that David slew the lion and he slew the bear. So by the time he got to that next level of life, what was that next level? By the time he got to Goliath, he knew that God had already brought him through from the bear he knew that God had already brought him through the lion so by the time he got to Goliath he looked Goliath in his face and said I qualify for this look at somebody and say I qualify for this you didn't see when I had to fight off those demons by myself you didn't see when I had to fight off loneliness you didn't see when my back was up against the wall you didn't see when I was up all night long praying and fasting. But because God allowed me to go through the pain, now that I'm at this next level of my life, I qualify. Look at somebody and say, I qualify. What you're going through is not for no reason. I said what you're going through is not for no reason. The pain that you've suffered, the lonely nights that you suffered, the death that you went through, the enemy will make you feel like it was for no reason. It'll make you feel like that the world is against you. But that was God qualifying you for the next part of your life because something else is coming after this trial and you're going to have to have the strength to fight that demon off. You're going to have to have the power to break through that bondage. You're going to have to have the power to accomplish that goal. Look at somebody and say, I qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I qualify. I, I qualify. Y'all take your seat. Y'all take your seat. Y'all take your seat. Yeah, yeah. I qualify. I qualify. I didn't go through for nothing. They didn't abandon me for nothing. I, was, I didn't feel lonely for nothing. I didn't feel worthless for nothing. But God was helping me to see that you don't put your faith in man. You don't put your trust in man. But your, the Bible says my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy. Lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock. How many know that Christ is a solid rock? On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I qualify for this. Yeah, I qualify. I've got experience. Look at somebody and say, I've got experience for this trial. Let's move on through the text. i got to hurry up and get you where I'm going. Uh, here in our text, we see a man who was truly dedicated to God and lived to please him. Uh, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible illustrates Job as one that took care of all of his children and possessions without neglecting to worship and give thanks to the one who afforded him of his riches. Job was a rich man. He had power. He had money. He had a, a, a big family. And in those days, the wealth was not only measured in the amount of money, but it was measured in the amount of animals and the amount of land and the 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 the, the the bigness of your uh, ch children and how big your family was, rather. So Job was a man that was great uh, in wealth, and but and out of all of his wealth, he still never to neglect God. He still would go forth. The Bible says he would go forth and offer sacrifices to God uh, in, in concern of his children. He would still worship God. If I could put my pen right there, a lot of us, when God blesses us, we forget all about God. 
Look at y'all looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When God blesses us, we stop praying like we used to. We stop laying before the Lord when we were broke, busted, and disgusted. You couldn't beat us in the prayer line. You couldn't beat us on our knees. You couldn't beat us asking God to help us. But now that we got a, a horse and a mule and, and, and got 5,000 acres, now we no longer pray like we used to pray. We no longer fast like we used to fast. We no longer labor for the Lord like we used to labor for the Lord. But I don't know about you, whether I'm rich, whether I'm poor, whether I'm broke, whether I'm healthy, whether I'm sick, I need God. I need him every day, every hour. I need him. Is there anybody in here that needs God? During a conversation between God and Satan, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says God asks Satan of his whereabouts. Uh, Satan replied saying he'd been walking the earth too and fro. God then asked Satan if he had considered his servant Job. It is here in the text where the word considered can be looked at through a magnifying glass. As I was studying that word and doing a little bit of history on that word, and when they use the word considered in that chapter, I, I was doing some study. And, and in this case, the word considered is taken from military terms. Uh, it is a term that is used of a general who is studying a city before he attacks it in order that he might develop his strategy whereby he can destroy the city. He sits and watches how often the gates are open and who goes in and out of their gates so that at, at an opportune time he can advance in an attack against the city during its weakest moments. My brothers and sisters, that's just how the devil conducts his plan against us. Whether we are aware of it, the devil watches us and studies our habits uh, to see when the most effective time is to destroy us uh, and cause us to be out of communion with God. Uh, he watches how often we pray. He watches what angers us. Uh, he even watches what turns us on. Uh, he becomes an expert on how to conduct a plan to destroy our lives. First Peter 5 and 8 says, stay alert. Uh, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. Now, when I look at that, that word prowl, that word prowl just simply means uh, to stealthily watch, to secretly watch. When I was younger, me and my father used to always uh, watch Nat Geo Wild and, and the Animal Planet, and we would watch how the moderator would talk about this, this lion that was stalking its prey. And if you look at the lion closely, the lion would fix his body and he was so uh, uh, astute in the fact of knowing how to hide himself and how to be quiet in order to study his prey. He would sit in the bushes and while the antelope or the gazelle was uh, drinking water or running in a pack, he would sit and watch him and he would look for the weakest link. He would sit and watch and see the, the patterns that, the, that, that, that young gazelle or that young uh, deer would uh, make. He would watch how it would drag up behind the crowd it would watch how that young uh, deer would, would, would lag behind its mother and he would sit there patiently watching waiting for a moment to execute and waiting for a moment to prounce on its prey and while the deer was walking around as if nothing and no harm was around that lion would sit and all the while he would inch closer and closer and the deer would still be drinking water or playing or, or running around and while this was going on that old that old lion would still be in the bushes but all the while he would be itching closer and closer and at that opportune time when the mother would stop paying attention that old lion would come running full force and pounce on that young lion and achieve his prey my brothers and sisters that's just how the devil is he knows how much we pray he knows how much we fast he knows when we're weak he knows when we're lonely. He knows when we want company. So he sits and watches us. And at the very opportune time, he sends temptation our way. He sends discouragement our way in hopes to ensnare the believer. That's why Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not 
against flesh and blood. This battle is not against your brother or your sister. But we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against things seen and unseen. The devil wants to catch us with our guards down. He wants to catch us when we see, when, when, we, when we're walking as if we're walking through tulips, the enemy is stalking us. He's watching us. And one thing about the enemy, he's patient. He watches how much you, you're, you're on your knees fasting and praying. He knows when you stop fasting like you used to. He knows when you stop reading the word like you used to. Then all of a sudden, sin creeps up on you and takes you out because you stop uh, putting up that defense against the enemy. You've got to keep praying in this day. You've got to keep, the old saints would say, don't stop praying for the Lord is not. Don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry for the Lord has promised and his word is true. Don't stop praying. He'll answer you. We don't pray just because we need answers, but we pray because we need protection. Can I hear somebody? We pray because we need protection against the end. You are no match for the enemy in and of yourself. But we need the armor of God on. That armor that, that, that guards our head. The helmet of salvation. Uh, that armor that, that guards our feet. Our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That belt that guards our loins. Uh, uh, yeah, we need the breastplate of righteousness. And we need the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Can I get a witness here? I'm moving right along. I'm hurrying as fast as I can. Satan urges uh, his point to God that the only reason Job is serving him is because of the hedge of protection God had around him and his possessions. Look at Satan accusing Job before God. Lord, give me some strength. Satan did uh, it to Job. And I'm sure he's doing the same thing to us. Satan is the accuser other brethren. I'm sure he is the same accuser now that he was then. Revelations 12 and 10 explains to us that the devil constantly stands before the throne of God, accusing you and I. Although this is taking place, the Bible goes on to say, but we have overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. In other words, yes, we were guilty of all the charges. Yes, we did those things that were not right in the sight of God. But because God's grace and his love wraps us, he's already covered us under the blood. And there is no sin. There is no guile. There is no uh, offense that we can do that can take us out of communion with God because we're constantly covered under the blood. As long as we confess our sins to God. The Bible says he's faithful and just to what? To forgive us. Is there anybody in here that needs forgiveness? A lot of us today must do a self-evaluation and ask ourselves, why are we truly serving God? Is it because God has always been faithful to us and never allowed the enemy to touch our possessions? I found out throughout my walk that it is easy to say God is a healer. If you've never been sick, it is easy to say trust God when everything in your life is going well. It is easy to instruct individuals on what you think they should do while they are going through situations that seem unbearable sometimes when life becomes unbearable it is not always easy to trust God through the storm when it seems that all hope is lost and when it seems your health is failing and when it seems that God had allowed the bottom to fall out on you it is not always easy to trust or to trust the process I heard the old preacher say, even though you might not can trace God in your problems, we are required to trust him. We are required to trust the plan of God. Can I get a witness? Here we see God allowed Job to lose all he had. And if that wasn't enough, he now loses his health. And I'm rushing 
through the text. Can you imagine losing everything you possess, including your health? Instead of Job blaming God and expressing his anger against God, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, I said the Bible says, he falls to the ground in mourning and worships God. Sometimes in our lives, uh, uh, when things don't go out as we expected them to go, and everything that could go wrong uh, does go wrong, we must find ourselves in a position of worship to God. I'm crying, but I'm still worshiping. I'm grieving, but I'm still worshiping. I feel like I'm left all alone uh, to pick up the broken pieces in my life. Uh, but through it all, uh, I'm still worshiping. Uh, they hurt me uh, and left me by myself. Uh, but I, I'm still worshiping. Uh, I've been betrayed. Uh, I've been lied on uh, and talked about. Uh, yet, 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 yet. Uh, yet I'm still worshiping. Uh, Sometimes I still feel worthless uh, and irrelevant, uh, but through my feelings and discouragement, uh, I'm still worshiping uh, my worship. I said my worship, my, 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 my worship is not predicated uh, on how I feel, uh, but it is predicated uh, upon what I know. Uh, I said my worship is not predicated on how I feel, but it's predicated on what I know. Sometimes life can get us in a place where we can't even utter words. The only thing we can do is cry out and lift up our hands in total surrender, surrender to God. There will come a time in our lives uh, when we can no longer uh, pray that cute and elegant prayer uh, the only thing we can do uh, is cry uh, is cry out uh, cry out to God and say Lord 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 help me uh, I don't know about you uh, but have you ever been in a place uh, where it seemed all hope was lost have you ever been in a place uh, where it seemed that you were lonely uh, and all you could do uh, was get down on your knees uh, and cry out to God and say, Lord, 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 help me. Can the church say yes? I'm coming to a close now. Job was now at a place uh, where all his dignity uh, was gone and he was left to accept he was left to accept the fate of his suffering, to add insult to injury. His wife is now trying to encourage him to curse God and die, watching Job suffer and experience a great deal of physical and mental pain, cause his wife to be overwhelmed and fall into the trap of the enemy. Job explained to his wife uh, that her request to him uh, was one that was foolish uh, Job realized uh, I said Job realized uh, not only uh, must we as children of God uh, accept God's positions uh, not only uh, as we as the children of God uh, must accept good positions uh, from God uh, but we too must also uh, accept the fact uh, that sometimes God, I said sometimes God, allows contrary winds to blow in our lives. My brothers and my sisters, there is no benefit to us as children of God to be circumstantial Christians. I said there is no benefit to us as children of God to be circumstantial Christians. In other words, Christians. That's only all right when everything else is all right. But how many of you know when everything else is all wrong? God will make everything 
all right all hell might be breaking loose in your life but I come to let you know God will make everything all right he'll give you peace that passes all understanding he'll give you joy in sorrow he'll give you hope for tomorrow he'll give you peace he'll give you strength he'll give you happiness he'll give you joy look at your neighbor and say whatever you need God can give it to you when all hell is breaking loose in our lives we must maintain our faith in Jesus Christ and know that if he brought us if he brought me to this trial hey if he brought me to this trial he's the same God he's the same God he's the same God to deliver me he's the same God that will carry me through Jesus will carry you through Jesus will carry you through the old hymn said if you are tired of the load of your sins let Jesus come into your heart if you have no peace no peace within let Jesus come into your heart just now doubt and give o'er just now reject him no more just now throw open the door let Jesus let Jesus let Jesus come in to your heart I'm encouraged on today because I know no matter what I'm going through I am persuaded that God is able to keep me I am persuaded that he's able to pick your head up stick your chest out I said pick your head up stick your chest out pick your head up stick your chest out and learn that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you God will never let you down God will always be right there no matter no matter no matter what you're going through you've got to square square your shoulders and dry your tears there's no room for doubting say goodbye to your fears you're more you're more than a conqueror you were born to win things are gonna get better it won't be like this always but God is getting ready to shine the light from heaven on your situation I told you a few weeks ago don't panic watch what God is going to do and I stand firm to that on today I said I stand firm to that on today I'm not gonna panic I'm not gonna give in I'm not gonna give out because I know we've been made I can't get no help in here we've been made endure it for a night but joy 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 is coming in the morning if you can hang on until the morning joy will come if you can hang on till the morning peace will come if you can hang on till the morning everything you need will come my favorite scripture my favorite scripture says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he 
increase of strength uh, even the youth uh, shall faint uh, and be weary uh, and the young men uh, shall uh, utterly fall uh, but they that wait uh, they that wait uh, they that wait uh, on the Lord uh, shall uh, renew their strength uh, you're gonna mount up uh, with the wings uh, as an eagle uh, you're gonna run uh, and not uh, be weary uh, you're gonna walk uh, and not faint uh, wait on them uh, wait on them uh, endure hardness uh, endure hardness uh, as a good soldier because after a while uh, the Lord will uh, make a way uh, after a while uh, the Lord will uh, make a way uh, say yes uh, yes uh, yes take me down just a little bit take me down just a little bit oh yeah I can hear the scripture saying that sounds really good there I can hear the scripture saying yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will feel no evil I might be going through a situation that feels like death but God promised me that I will fear no evil look at somebody and say this time you won't fear no evil you won't fear no evil can the church say yes to understand the true meaning of abiding under the care of God to understand the true meaning of abiding under the care of God is to be spiritually aware that life still has its ups and downs however in the middle of the storms in the middle of the storms of life God will never allow something to come upon you that you cannot bear but he always he always allows it to happen because he knows many of us are just like the lightning bug what you mean brother preacher I said God allows certain things to happen in our life because he knows many of us today are just like the lightning bug what you talking about the lightning bug when the lightning bug goes out at night everything he needs to see everything he needs is already on the inside of him many of us today don't realize the strength that we carry in God and we don't realize that everything that we need to make it in this day is already on the inside of us everything we need to make it is already on the inside of us when we are truly abiding in Jesus Christ the trials of this life may cause us to be temporarily knocked off our feet but it can never knock us out of the fight it never knock us out of the fight Job was at a place when he was temporarily knocked off his feet and on top of all the hardship he faced uh, his friends even accused him of doing something wrong in response uh, to his current situation my brothers and my sisters it amazes me how how individuals uh, will call you friend huh? individuals uh, that we call friends uh, and confidants uh, can change skins uh, as soon as they get word uh, of things going wrong in our lives uh, they automatically assume uh, that you've done something against God uh, to make him show uh, his anger towards you uh, I found out uh, I found out uh, that the heat from the trials uh, of this life uh, has a way uh, of revealing uh, who our real friends are uh, and who was just standing uh, 
around close enough, uh, waiting to get a courtside view uh, of our downfall uh, and our suffering. Uh, Lord, help me in here. Uh, while Job was facing uh, the lack of support uh, from his wife uh, and the ridicule uh, from his friends, uh, he's now left uh, to deal with his own uh, inner problems uh, and his feelings. Uh, imagine uh, being in a place uh, of isolation uh, and ridicule uh, and physical pain. Uh, if Job could sing a song, I, I believe it would be gloom. If Job could sing a song, I believe the song would be gloom, despair, agony on me deep dark depression excessive misery if it wasn't for bad luck I'll have no luck at all gloom despair agony on me the Bible the Bible the Bible says that Job goes as far to curse the day that he was born my dears and sirs it's one thing to suffer but it's another thing to suffer publicly. In this moment, it seems everyone has an opinion and a revelation concerning your situation. In the middle of greatest trials, in the middle of the greatest trials of our life, it seems things go from bad to worse. And we are left asking God, why must I go through this? Why must I suffer from cancer? I've been praying like I should. I've been fasting like I should. Why must I have cancer in my body? Why must my child be strung out on drugs? I kept them in the sunshine band. I kept them in vacation Bible school. I kept them in church. Why must my child be strung out on drugs why must I be in financial debt why must I be lonely and without a companion in the middle of all our questions I've realized that God didn't spare me from the pain but he protected me through the process can I say that again for those of you that didn't catch it and for those of you that might be daydreaming, I said, God didn't spare me. God didn't spare me from the pain, but he protected me through the process. It hurt, but it didn't kill me. Hey, hey, it hurt, but it didn't kill me. I wanted to quit, but something on the inside wouldn't let me give in I had to cry some nights but after I finished crying I had to toughen up and continue to walk through the trial between reality and the promise we must all go through a measure of suffering this suffering is not made to kill you but it is designed to, to show uh, your faithfulness uh, to God uh, folks thought uh, you were crazy when you could still smile uh, even when all hell uh, was breaking loose in your life uh, they called you strange uh, when you still treated people uh, right even after uh, the public embarrassment uh, they looked at you funny uh, when you still had enough strength uh, to give glory to God uh, even in the middle uh, of tempestuous winds uh, the secret uh, I said the secret was not uh, in our own strength uh, but you realized uh, that though I'm being uh, attacked on every side uh, and it seems uh, there's no defense uh, for me uh, he promised uh, he promised, he promised, he would never, never, never leave me alone. I've come to find out 
Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him when I come through this trial. I'll have assurance that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. When I come through this trial, I can surely say, I thank God I can't get no help in here. When I come through this trial, I can surely say, I thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys, all the storms he's brought me through. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God to be a problem solver. I wouldn't know what faith, faith, hey, faith in God would do. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend upon his word. I've learned he's a keeper. I've learned when man leave you by yourself, we have a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points, tempted like as we, yet without sin, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find grace and mercy to help us in the time of need. I'm closing my book and I'm going to my seat, but all I come to tell you today is to hold on through the storms, hold on through the rain. You can make it, you can go through your blessing. Hey, your blessing is on the other side of the room. You've got to go through, you've got to face it, square your shoulders, toughen your skin, and go through. There's a generation that needs to hear your testimony. There's a generation that needs to know, though he slay me, I trusted him. I felt like giving in. I felt like giving up. I felt like throwing in the towel. But something on the inside kept telling me, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can make it. 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 No matter what you're facing, you can make it. It won't be like this always because God sees and he knows and after I said it after you have suffered for a while the king will come in and establish you after you've gone through the rain after you've gone through the hurt he's going to make it all right all right all right all right all right it's gonna be 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 all right look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right if you believe it's gonna be all right come out of yourself and give god the best praise you can give them praise them now i have decided 
I have decided to make Jesus my choice. The road gets rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb. But I, 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 I started out a long time ago and there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus is my choice. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I'm going to hold my head up. I'm going on with the Lord. You may talk about me and scandalize my name, but I, I'm going on with Jesus just the same. Is there anybody in here that can say I'm going on with Jesus just the same? I've lost a lot of things. I've lost friends. I've lost loved ones. I've lost money. I've lost some happiness and I've lost friends. But there's one thing I, I've never lost. I've never lost my hope. I've never lost my joy. But most of all, most of all, most of all, I've never, I've never, I've never lost my praise. Because praise is what I do. Praise is who I am. Praise is what gets through. I've never lost my praise. You might can take my money. You might can take my honey. But you can never, you can never take my praise. My praise is my power. My praise is my secret weapon. My praise will make the enemy back up because he realized that my praise has power. My praise has power. Power to run through troops. Power to leap over walls. Whatever you do, don't lose your praise. Don't lose your worship. It might get hard. It might get weary. But don't lose. Don't lose. Don't lose. Don't lose your praise. If you got a praise, I want you to give it to him now. When I count to three, I want you to get a dance. And I want you to begin to praise God. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, one, two, three, dance. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. I can hear the song that says, I vow to praise him in the good and the bad. I'll praise him. Oh, whether had be or sad I'll praise him oh in all that I go through because do oh, yeah. come on and praise him let's sing it one more time yes sir. I vow to praise, praise him. him oh in the good and the bad I'll praise him whether happy whether happy or sad, I'll praise him. Oh, and all I go through because praise is what I 
because Praise no matter what I'm going through, Praise no matter what I'm facing, sickness in my body, Praise death in my family, Praise is what I 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 do Give the loss of praise 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus,
done more, he has done more than I ever expected. Break it down. Yes, He's done more, done more than I ever expected. He's Break it more. down some more. He's done more. He done I wish more. I had a voice. Than I ever expected. Ever expect. He's done more. Oh, yeah. Than I ever oh, yeah. expected. Oh, yeah. He's done more. Yeah. He kept my mind. He kept my mind. Yeah. Than I ever expected. I didn't deserve it. Yes, sir. I was guilty of all the charges. Yeah. But he's done more. More, more. He's done more. Oh, more. He's done more. More. He's done more. More. more yes, sir. Than I ever expected. I expected. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. That's more. why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. Oh, and I mag I magnify by your name. Can you help me sing it? Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, that's why. Filled with praise, praise, praise in the morning, praise in the noon, and praise oh, in the evening. Yeah. That's why my heart is filled with, with praise. praise. I'm going to praise Him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Come on, lift up your hands and worship in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why. Praise him. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I owe God my praise. Is there anybody in here that owe God a praise? I don't know about you, but I owe God a praise. While there's a sweet spirit in here. If you are in here on today, we all need strength. If you're in here on today, and you've been facing something that seemed unbearable, and you know that you need help from God, you know that you need strength from God, I want you to come around this altar and we're all going to pray with you. I need to be at this altar because I need help from God. I don't know about you, but I need help from God. Every day, every hour, I'm nothing without him. As I was saying while I was preaching, abiding under the care of God is not just uh, uh, feeling his protection but it's also knowing that he's with us in the worst seasons of our lives. When we're under the care of God, things still will happen. We're still going to go through death. We're still going to lose loved ones. I know. You couldn't tell me that I would ever have to witness my father passing away. 
You wouldn't tell me that those that I looked up to would abandon me and leave me by myself and, 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 and have me out here by myself. You couldn't have told me that. You couldn't have told me that I would be able to say at 16 years old I lost my father. Tragically. You couldn't have told me that. But life happens. And just like that, many of you have gone through some things, got an unexpected bad note from the doctors or, or your son was, uh, had, was on drugs or you lost a family, family member through the COVID season. Life happens. But through life, God is there to cover us. He said he will never put more on you than you can bear. But we're required to trust him through every season of our life. Some seasons don't make sense. Some things don't make sense. Some things happen to us. And we're like, God, why did you let this happen? I've been doing all I know to do. I've been paying my tithes. I've been, I've been blessing those. I've been attending church. I've been doing all I know to do. God, why did this happen to me? Have you ever been there? Have, have something ever happened in your life that you, God, why? But I've come to let you know after you have suffered for a while, God will make everything. That's a promise. God will. He's obligated to make everything all right. You're not going to be discouraged for long. You're not going to be uh, uh, feeling how you're feeling for a long time. But after this, this what you're going through is qualifying you. What you're facing is qualifying you for the next phase of life. So go through as a good soldier. The Bible says endure hardness as a good soldier. Knowing that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. And with patience comes experience. And when you have experience, you qualify. Look at somebody and say, I qualify for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This next phase of my life, I've been through the hurt. I've been through the pain. I know what it feels like to be lonely. I know what it feels like to be discouraged. So now that God is getting ready to do what he's going to do in my life, I qualify. I qualify. If there's nobody in here, if there's somebody in here that don't know Christ as the partner of your sins, I want you to come around this altar and we're going to pray. But as I head to my seat, I want to encourage each and every one of us no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard your situation might be, it's easier said than done. Uh -huh. Trusting God is easier said than done. Let's not act like we ain't never been there before. Let's not act like we wanted to be kept all the time. But sometimes God kept us even when we didn't want to be kept. He covered us even when we didn't want to be covered. He kept showing his mercy towards us when we felt like throwing in the towel and saying, what's the use? I've suffered. I've gone through. I have no wins. I have more losses than I have wins. What's the use? But while you're going through that season, God is saying, hang in there. Because in this next season of your life, you're going to qualify. We've been made endure for a night. But joy will come. That's the blessed assurance that we as the people of God have. Joy will come. That's one of my favorite scriptures. I love to quote it because we all go through something. We all have night seasons. We all have seasons where we're crying and where we feel less, lesser than what we are. We all have those seasons. But God said it. Go through it. Go, go, go through it. Go through it. Go through it. You're suffering on your job. Go through it. You're, you're in an uncharted territory. You're in unfamiliar territory. Go through it. Because it's qualifying you for that next season of your life. And by the time you get to that season, you'll be able to stand bold and stand firm in God. Because you know if he did it before, he'll do it again. The same God back then is the same God right now. Come on and put those hands together. As I return back to my seat, I want to encourage each and every one of you. Hang in there. No matter what you're facing, hang in there. This wasn't a deep message. I didn't have a whole bunch of deep uh, revelations. But I just simply come to you with plain language to tell you to hang in there. Hang in there. Look at somebody and say, hang on in there. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. Don't, don't give in. Don't backslide. Don't, don't throw in the... Hang in there. Because it's the next season coming. And don't forfeit this season because of your feelings. But go through the process.
Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go through the process. Go through the hurt. Go through the shame. Go through the loneliness. Go through, sometimes we even go through depression. Go, go, go through it. Because God is right there. James Moore said he was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. God is there. You might not can't feel him. You might not can trace him. But I'm talking, but I'm encouraging myself. Because right now I'm going through a season where it's, it's unfamiliar to me. I have to ask, Lord, I know you didn't give me the spirit of fear. I know you didn't give me that spirit. So, Lord, help me. But I know this season is going to qualify me for the next. So I've got to go through. Look at somebody and say, go through it. 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 In Jesus' name, God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise for that word. I know it blessed me. I, I know it blessed you as well. Abiding under the care of God. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful word sent from the Lord for a time such as this. Some may not even understand it right now, but as my, my former pastor used to say, you'll catch it when you get in your car going down the road. And then because he said a whole lot right there to shake up the whole neighborhood. Amen. Abided under the care of God. Amen. He was he was saying some things that the Lord was downloading with me to me this morning about three. And I began to hear what the Lord is saying. He touched on just about everything God spoke to me about this morning. So I'm encouraged for that word there. That's powerful. How God could just come and just confirm his word. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you're going to be all right. As a matter of fact, you are all right right now. You might as well put a smile on your face right now. Oh, yes. You're all right right now. You're already healed. You're already delivered. You're already set free. So what you got to worry about? There's nothing you can worry about. Amen. I thank God for him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. 